The next of our major subheadings in hardware is Domain Objective 1.6 CPU, Central Processing Unit. And specifically for this subheading 1.6, you want to be able to differentiate among various CPU types and features and select the appropriate cooling method. Subcategories of information under this is going to be socket types, characteristics of the CPUs, and cooling. So we're going to subdivide this presentation on central processing units into those three subcategories. First of all, let's do a little bit of an overview about CPU or the processor or the system processor as it's sometimes called. That's the central processing unit. That's the brain. That's the brain that does all the calculating in your computer. It manipulates your data, your Excel spreadsheet. It also manipulates your solitaire, moving that, you know, uh, jack of clubs over onto the queen of hearts. The brain or the processor also executes all the program code for any of your applications. And, of course, the processor executes the operating system, which is the biggest of the applications of all. Well, not always. That brain or that processor, that CPU, is specific to the motherboard and the chipset. We actually saw quite a bit of that in our previous section on motherboards. Well, now we've left the motherboards. We're stepping square into CPU, Central Processing Unit. We're going to go into a lot more detail, like I promised you earlier. When we briefly glanced motherboard CPU sockets, it's time to do some detail. But remember, the CPU is specific to each motherboard and chipset. And there are two manufacturers of processors, Intel and AMD. And quite honestly, I'm glad because they're keeping both their competitors on their toes to make as good a product as possible for all of us. Having the two competitors who both make very good products keeps this industry moving along. All right, let's talk about CPU or processors. Let's talk about the socket types. Now we saw the sockets in an overview fashion on the motherboards, but let's get down a little bit more nitty gritty here. There's predominantly two different types of sockets for our motherboards. There's going to be a socket that takes pins. In other words, on the underside of that processor, those little pins sit down into or fit down into holes in the socket. That socket's going to be called a PGA or a pin grid array. When you put that processor into that socket, you got to be careful that you align those pins properly because in a lot of cases, you'll see on some of the four corners of that processor, pins on the other side, underside that come all the way up to the very corner in a 90 degree angle. Sometimes they don't. One of those corners might not have a pin in that very corner. In other words, the row of pins runs across at a 45 degree angle. So you do have to align that processor to that socket correctly if it is a pin grid array. Now when you do that, you should be able to align that and pretty much just let go and gravity will take over to pull that processor down into that socket. It's officially called zero insertion force. In other words, you should not have to mash and push that socket down into that pin grid array, excuse me, that processor down into that pin grid array socket. If you're pushing, that's a bad thing and you're going to bend some of those little tiny pins on the underside of that chip. Don't do that. If it doesn't just drop down ever so smoothly, then pick it up, pay attention, look at the pins, look at the socket and figure out if you have it aligned correctly. Zip, zero insertion force should work. You should not have to push that chip that processor down into the socket. Now once it is fully seated down into the socket, what you're going to see is with this type of socket, there's a little lever that locks that CPU into place in that socket. The other of the two predominant types of sockets is a land grid array or an LGA. There are no pins that are sticking down into holes. There are no holes in the socket at all. These processors actually just rest right on top of the contacts. Now it's actually locked down by a little cap or a little lid, if you will, that rests over the top of that processor. And then another little lever that you lock down holds it in place. But there are no pins on the land grid array. And I'm going to show you both of those as we're going through our demos with the sockets and the socket types that take the individual CPU types. Pins or not. 
Let's go back in time a little bit to one of the earliest of our processors in the modern era, if you will, is the SEC. That stands for Single Edge Contact Cartridge. This type of processor fit into a particular socket that was called a slot 1. It was the Pentium 2. It was the Pentium 2 processor that fit into that slot 1 connection. And the cartridge was a great big old thing. It's actually probably about that big. I've got one I'm going to show you live in my demo. I've got a picture here as well. So this single edge contact cartridge is that Pentium 2. And inside a large plastic carrier is where your processor's at. That large plastic carrier is going to actually be guided down by a couple of plastic rails that are sticking up. So this big cartridge slides down the left and right of these rails. And then on the motherboard at the bottom, there's a slot. That slot's going to look fairly similar to your standard expansion slot. However, it will not take a PCI card or a PCI Express card. It's keyed very different. It's meant only for that Pentium 2 processor. Well, here's a little bit of what it looks like. Over on the left-hand side, you can see that big black cartridge of that Pentium 2 processor. And like I said before, I've got one of these, and I'll be able to turn it on edge and show you what you can't see here from the picture, which is that gold contacts looks similar to an expansion slot. Over on the right-hand side, you can see that there is a little white label that says slot 1. And that little white label is over a long, sort of brownish-looking slot. And the two rails are sticking up, those little plastic rails at the two ends of that slot. So what you do is you turn this cartridge on its edge. You follow down those rails until you get to the bottom. Push down on it pretty firmly, and it'll snap or click into place. That's the old Pentium 2 SECC. Legacy for sure, I guarantee you. Next is another type of socket and processor, and that's the PGA. That's that pin grid array I talked about. PGA stands for pin grid array, and what you have are a lot of pins that stick down below the underside of that processor or that CPU chip because your socket has holes that match up to that processor. Now, a lot of your sockets are going to have names that match up to the number of pins. You're going to have like a socket 370, a socket 423, because that's the number of pins it's got. Those holes sometimes are in nice straight rows. One row going down, one row going across at a 90 degree angle. On other occasions, you'll see some of these sockets where they're not all straight together like that in 90 degree angles. They're actually staggered. And that's called an SPGA, a staggered pin grid array but it still is holes in the socket for the processor to come down with zero insertion force and simply drop in. One of the things you probably are going to need to do is memorize some of these sockets for specific processors for the exam. I know, that's a royal pain, but unfortunately on the last exams and on the new exams there's a good chance you may get asked one or two questions on which processors go into which socket. So hang on for news. Let's start here with the first of them. The socket 370 was used for the Pentium, Intel Pentium 3, and the Celeron processors. The socket 423 were the early Pentium 4 processors. There was another one called a socket A, and it actually was also sometimes referred to as a socket 462. That's going to take your AMD processors, the AMD Athlon, the AMD Duron, and Simpron processors was that socket A462. Then along came the socket 478, which was the Pentium 4, and the Celeron processors fit into that socket. PGA, remember, stands for pin grid array. While we're still talking about sockets with pins, number 479 was going to be a socket for your laptop Pentium M or the Celeron M. The socket 603 was for the Intel Xeon processor. The 604, I'm, I'm sorry, did I say 603 or 606? I'm losing my mind. Socket 603 is the Intel Xeon, and the socket 604 is the Intel Xeon with micro FCPGA. That stands for flip chip pin grid array. That micro flip chip pin grid array was in laptops. The next of the sockets was the socket 754. That's going to hold the AMD Athlon 64, the Simpron, and the Turian 64 processor. And the socket P was for the 478 pin micro flip chip pin grid array mobile packages. 
Here's what it looks like, ladies and germs. Over on the left-hand side, I've got a processor that's flipped upside down. Now, this is a really early processor. For those of you that have seen a lot of processors, you're looking at that thinking, gracious sakes, what is that? Well, it might even be an old 486, to the best of my knowledge. But it's a great picture. It's got some really long pins sticking up there. And not all of them are that long or that big. The point is, on the underside of these PGA processors, you got all those pins. And then it turns around and it drops down into that socket, which is on the right-hand side. You can actually see, yeah, down at the bottom of the socket into the plastic, it says PGA 370. That's one of those original pin grid array 370 sockets. But what I most want you to notice is this. See the holes in the corners? In the upper right, there is a single hole right in the very corner at that 90 degree angle. The same is true in the bottom right. There's a hole in the very corner at that 90 degree angle. But if you look at the upper left and the lower left, that's not the case. Well, that's how you've got to align the 370 pin processor that goes into this socket. I'm going to show you a demonstration on how to remove these and how to properly align them and then lock them back down. But as you're looking at that socket right there, that white socket with all those little black holes along the left edge, there's a funny looking sort of gray like bar out there. That bar is a bar that you use to lock down the socket once it's in fully into the socket. And you lock down the processor by lowering that bar down instead of vertical, which is the release, horizontal as you see it right there in the picture is when the processor is locked in to that socket. And I'm going to demonstrate that with my processors on my motherboards here shortly. So that's a picture of the underside of a processor that is pin grid array and a socket that would take a processor that's pin grid array. Now if you're paying attention or if you've paused the video, it's pretty clear that that processor on the left is not meant for that socket on the right. I simply picked pictures that give you very good visualizations of what I wanted you to learn. That's not meant to mate one to the other. You're not going to do it unless you start breaking off pins. A bad thing. 